Okay, so uh, today we're working on the alternator or generator, uh, depends how you call them, uh, for the Armour H3, uh, my 2006. Uh, my alternator is not working properly, and one of the symptoms, oh, I figured it out before the, the car just stall on me or something like that. Uh, when I start the vehicle, my battery light on the dash was lighting up. And, but I could still drive with it, right? Usually when the light goes up, it means the battery is not charging. Uh, so what I did, I have a voltmeter and I check the voltage on the, voltage on the battery while the car was start and the voltage was dropping, like was going down 12, 11, 10, 9 and was dropping and dropping. So that means the alternator is not giving the power to the battery. Uh, it can be many things. It doesn't mean it's the battery right away, right? So the first thing I did, I cleaned both posts. And what I did, you can put Vaseline or uh, like contact grease, something like that. Anything to help, to help with the connection. And I start the vehicle again and look at it and the voltage kept going down so the second thing i checked i checked my secondary ground that's in the corner right there i cleaned it did the same thing same problem so now it's either the battery is out or the alternator is bad uh, i checked the battery the battery was good okay got a good voltage and so that means it's my alternator uh, GM's uh, gener General Motor, if you go to Chevy or any dealer, they're going to say it's a 8 hours job. They need to remove the fender, their inner fender, and they'll come from the bottom and remove it from the bottom. I feel it's a pain in the ass. Uh, sorry about that, but it's true. Uh, so, just by looking at it, I have a doubt I can remove it from the top. Uh, I saw many other people doing from the from the top uh, I saw people uh, removing the bracket and bending the AC pipe I don't like doing that I really hate bending stuff all right but there is always an easier way to do stuff so what it will do it's pretty easy that pipe is flexible we'll move it to the side we'll remove the fuse box the battery well Okay, first step, remove the battery, that's going to clean the, that old corner and the, it will give you access to the wires in the back that's connected to the alternator. After that, remove your fuse, bo your fuse box, remove the cover, there'll be a few bolts, remove them, that's going to pop up. After that, you got this plastic connector on top, uh, plastic connector plastic cover that protects uh, that protects the wires uh, to remove it you just need to pop both sides either with your finger or you can use a, a flat screwdriver to pop them up and why I do that it's because there's a bolt see right there it's already removed but there's a bolt connected there and here once that's removed you can actually after that move the wire and that's going to help you out to remove the alternator afterward, right? Uh, for mine, the previous owner, I guess, never put the bolt back. But I'll still try to cover it for you guys. Uh, you put some tape right there, I'll need to, connect, uh, to cut that up. So once that is done, battery removed, fuse box removed, those two bolts removed. You'll come to the front and you'll remove the two bolts that's holding the alternator in place uh, of course before removing the bolts you'll need to go on the tensioner over there and remove the belt but by unscrewing the bolts logically it's gonna pop right out so don't be scared for that and we'll see what happened from there uh, I started unscrewing that plate you can do it too but I don't think you really have to do it because there is nothing really in the way 
but it could actually help you out to remove it from the top. So to remove that plate, there is a eight millimeter bolt. Uh, it's a 10 if I remember, sorry about that. Uh, use a 10 to remove that bolt that's holding the AC. Uh, 15 millimeter for that one. And for mine, there wasn't any bolt at the bottom. Uh, you'll have a small bolt right there. So I guess somebody tried to remove it and it seems, no, it's not there. I thought it was broken, but it's actually not there. So remove that one. Uh, even though if you unbolt those, it's gonna stay there, right? Because it's connected with the uh, alternator, the bracket of the alternator. So don't be scared of that. So <clears throat> first step for now, remove the battery. So I won't show that, just pretty easy. Unscrew that, unscrew that, remove the battery. And after that, I'll remove that cover and I'll show you where to unscrew for the fuse box. All right, I'll be right back. So, okay, so I removed the battery uh, just to make sure that you guys, you, to let you guys know, you don't need to unscrew it completely, just enough to snug it up. Then you'll be able to pop it out. Uh, if I remember, this is a 10 millimeter. Yep, it's a 10 millimeter. And right there in the back, it's a 13. And what you do, you unscrew it a bit with the 13, enough to back up that plate. And that will help you guys to remove the battery. Uh, the second part is the fuse box. The fuse box got those little pin right there and there, uh, two in the back. So the way you remove them, it's put a pressure towards the engine from this side. Oops, already removed it. And same thing towards the fender. And that will pop it up. Once this is popped, let's put it away the battery. There it is. Here at the fuse box, you see, it's all dirty. I never cleaned it. Uh, to remove the bottom part of this, uh, you need to unscrew those two bolts. And right there, there is a there's pins oh, come from this side that you need to squeeze. I don't know if you can see towards the inside like this. And by squeezing with both hands, one that side, one that side, you'll be able to pull up the whole thing. Uh, once the whole thing is is pulled up, there's be bolt at the bottom that will remove that old plastic uh, holder or whatever the way you want to call it. Uh, if you got a block heater like this one, just take this, pull the wire, put it in the back, it's on the way, make sure to bend this inward, and from that you'll have a, an easier job to do it. So what I'll do, I'll unscrew this and I'll remove that part and I'll be right back. Okay, so like I said, I removed the two bolts uh, the reason for that is to unconnect those little clip. So now, uh, like I said, I pulled it up. So the easiest way is to, with both hands, one on one side, one on the other side, uh, pull those pin towards the inside and grab those bracket that pops from the side and pull it upward. Try to pull both sides at the same time and I'll show you guys why. Uh, when you remove it, you realize the bottom is connected to two more connectors from the back that comes on those pins and you don't want to bend them, right? So make sure that when you pull it, you pull the whole thing straight from both sides at the same time, okay? To be able to move that part easier from mine, uh, there's a tie wrap connected right there so I'll cut it out uh, I guess on the original one there must be some kind of plastic clamp that you just need Oops, sorry it's focusing on the bracket uh, there is going to be a plastic clamp that you can just pop open with a screwdriver or something like that so I'm not really sure what the original one looks like just for mine it's that so make sure that that connection uh, that um, bracket is unconnected and that will give you all the loose necessary to pull that to the side and completely remove uh, that corner where the alternator is. So what I'll do, I'll, I'll cut that out 
and we'll switch to those two connector that's on the bottom so we'll be right back all right so as you see i put it to the side just be careful like i said there is pin behind it you don't want to break anything from that all right <laughs> that's one of the more most important thing from that job uh, as you remember I, I was talking about that plastic cover right with the two bolts it's already removed but the reason why you see now I got complete access so the only thing that can be in the way of the alternator when I remove it is the fuse box so to unconnect those you see this one's already disconnected there's only three places that connects it there's the two pins that are right there the only thing you need to do is push them towards the plastic itself and push those two pins forwards and right there use a screwdriver and go there's actually a groove right there you see so you just need to put your screwdriver there and in line with those you'll squeeze the bottom pin this is the one we see but the one we want is at the bottom right there i don't know if you can actually see the difference so there is the pin at the top and there's a bottom one right there and that one need to be reached with a screwdriver by using those slots right there right just like the way i put it so once it's removed there's a bolt at the bottom that's holding this thing down and there is one in that corner and there is one under that one once that is done i'll be able to remove the box for the fuse box uh, like i said just be careful so i'll still do that one just to show you guys because you want that to be snug on mine it's kind of cheating because mine's already done so i'll cut off that plastic and remove that but as you can see, the only thing you need to do is pop this open, right? Right there. Do the same on that side. Yeah. Wait. Hard time. With one finger. Just. Ah, uh, dang. You want to show something to people? It's really harsh. Ah, there you go. So. Once it's removed, you'll get access to the bolt that goes there. Maybe a, maybe it's a clip that's actually down there. So once it's removed, you don't need to run to clip it right away back again. Whoops, sorry, it's pretty dark. Yeah. So you don't need to clip it back again, but you just do that. One clip there, one clip here. There's one on the other side. There's one there, one there. And for me, I didn't need to remove that, but just remove those, remove those pins, and after that, you'll get all the give necessary to work on the alternator. So what I'll do, I'll remove those two. Uh, that one's already, re it's already <laughs> removed, but I'll remove that one and unscrew that bolt, the other one, and the one that's under this one. And I'll come back, and from there, we'll see what happens. Alrighty, so as you can see, I removed the three bolts. The only thing I needed to do as you see the wire goes in between that bracket so you just need to pull it up like this and slide it out that way okay. now the both connectors fall down oh, there you go so put that to the side there you go so i usually just put back the bolts in place so i don't lose them and i don't forget them because one of the problem of all mechanics is completing a job and realizing that you got plenty of bolts left over and you have no clue where they're coming from and that's one of the reason i started making those videos uh, quick side note i was making those videos for a buddy of mine that knows nothing uh, to do mechanic um, didn't know how to change tire and air etc he just never learned it's not his fault so I was making little videos like this and I was giving to him and at one point he said why not make videos for people and from there I started making this channel so yeah hope you guys enjoy this me working and enjoying myself that's fun 
So now you see we got one connector right there. We're supposed to have another one. I'm pretty sure it's hidden up right there. So that one must be a screw on. That's a typical. You just need to pull that off. It seems pretty tight, so I'll use a screwdriver to pop out that cover, that rubber cover right there, and remove the bolt. And for that connector, seems to be the good old classic just connector with a small clamp on top. Uh, it's pretty hard to see on the phone, but I uh, just need to squeeze it out and pull it out. From there, after I disconnect those two, I'll be able to remove those two bolts. Uh, maybe I'll remove the belt before, I'll see. I'll think about it. Uh, for now, let's just focus one step at a time and we'll unconnect those two connection in the back. Uh, as you can see, it's pretty, pretty dirty. And it's kind of wet, so I'm wondering if it's not something dripping from somewhere that will have caused the alternator to go bad. So that could be something. Keep an, always an eye open on what's around what you're working on. If you see something wet like that, it's a sign of something, right? Could be nothing, could be something. So yeah, so for now, I'll disconnect those two. Uh, just to let you know, you guys, uh, those were a 10 millimeters bolt. And when you, you will reinstall those uh, module, you see there is little clamps that's holding the the bottom part of the connector. Make sure they're all connected. Uh, this will prevent from the connectors to be sideways. So when you'll put the, the, the fuse box back in place and squeeze it down, you won't bet anything because it's properly in line. If those bottom part is not well secured, you see right there, there's another one right there my finger is those two and there's another one on the other side just make sure they're all connected properly you want them as straight as possible all right so okay so i'll move to that and i'll be right back i'll stop there uh i was removing the the um the connectors and the one on the bottom i removed that that rubber over it and the bolts right there uh, i don't have any sockets of uh, 13 millimeters or uh, half an imperial half inch uh, that could fit there with the ratchet so what i did i use the wrench and if you guys didn't watch my video about the linkage on the g body the el camino or the caballero uh, that's one trick i usually use so i put the wrench on it the open section up like this right and i use another one that i will connect from the top like that and now I got a long pry bar and I just need to that's it simple as that so what happened I can now use a lot more force uh, with a wrench and it's pretty helpful when you don't have a lot of place it's a old trick that I, that we use a lot in mechanic uh, I don't know now if they got pretty much all kind of different tool but we don't have money to buy really specific tools for those kind of situation. So a good old wrench like this, and a closed loop on it with the open up top, try to put it in the way that that upward side is on the side you will pull and you just connect with the other one over it. It's going to be really, really useful. So I'll finish on connecting, disconnecting this. And where did I put the, okay, right there. And for that one, was kind of tricky it's placed like this and you see it's a tab so you need to pull your finger at the bottom and try to lift it uh, the way the alternator is made it's pretty hard to put your finger behind it so it's going to be a bit painful just take your time yeah, it's going to take a little while just make sure not to pull on the wire and pull from the connector itself and just keep wiggling that, uh, wiggling it until it disconnects so okay, I'll finish on screwing that and I'll come back. Okay. So with a 15 millimeter, I um, snug those two bolts from the top, and you got a third one that's in line with that crack in the casing, but under the alternator. 
So if you follow with your finger the alternator and keep going down, you will eventually hit that hidden bulb. Uh, a normal socket will do the job, a normal 15 uh, millimeter will do the job. Uh, with the deep socket, depends how thick is your ratchet, but you may land just in line with that pipe and that won't work. So either get a normal socket with a small extension or maybe the breaker bar with the normal 15 and you'll be good enough to snug them all. Uh, so before removing your bolt, the only thing that's left is removing the belt. Uh, for the belt, it's really, really simple. You go to the tensioner at the bottom right there, and you see there's actually a square design. Got a square hole down there, right in front of my finger. You see that? That is where you can put actually uh, your ratchet. And the only thing you need to do is pull on it, and that's going to release the tension. And with the other hand, remove the belt. Uh, what I'll do. I'll actually cut the video in, like right now and I'll put a picture on all the belt pattern goes so I'll try to find one on online and I'll post that there uh, so okay from there I'll move to the other side and I'll let you like a 10 second to see the uh, actual picture of the uh, the belt pattern All right, so as you can see, I disconnect the, the bolt at the bottom and the two on the top. So now I got a full access to it. Uh, the reason why I removed it is just to show you a little difference. I said you can reach it once it's snug, but you can only reach it if you got those fin wall uh, sockets. And what I mean by fin walls, I got those impacts that I really thick walls to prevent them from breaking and those are the fin walls see the difference so with the casing uh, in place snug a bit you could actually fit one of those fin walls and there are some that's even thinner but the thing is be careful because those break easily if you apply too much force so i decided not to break my only 15 that i got left in my fin walls and just unscrew the whole thing and keep the thick wall 15 to do the rest of the job. So for the uh, for the bottom wall, uh, the bottom bolt that's under the casing, what I did, I used the ratchet for a little while, just long enough to snug it enough. Then I removed the ratchet from the socket and I turned the socket itself with my fingers to remove whatever is left over. With your hand, keep a pressure uh, on top of the casing to keep it straight. So it won't bend on the nut and give you a hard time to unscrew it. So by doing that, it's going to be really easy. So you see right now, it's all loose. So it's pretty easy to remove. But I'll still remove the plate just for the fun of it. And give myself an easier work. Sometimes better do two step more than fight yourself. Fight with all the, uh, the wires and everything. You don't want to break anything. You don't want to break the pipes. Some people will say uh, bending a pipe doesn't really matter. For me, I try to prevent from breaking stuff. So don't arm yourself, don't arm the vehicle, just take the easy step, remove that last bolt. So I'll remove the last one and I'll come back. So, okay. So as you can see, it's nearly completely out. What I did, uh, the alternator is pointing that way. That's the bottom bracket, okay? So the only thing I did, I took it and I flip it upside. So I want that pulley to be on top. And that bracket needs to be towards the wall of itself. So what you'll do when you pull it by the pulley, slide this part between the hose and the block. And then you'll just need to twist it so that pass over the uh, the O's of the EC. Once this is passed, you'll be able to turn it around and slide it out. So remember, the, the alternator is like this. Once it's unscrewed, flip it upside down. Well, I mean, on, 
on its back. Let's call it its back because that's the back part. Pull it on its back so the pulley is it's pointing upward. Then turn it on itself until this is in that opening and that part is in that opening right there. Okay, then you'll lift it and with the other end, make sure that this part slides over the AC from that corner and goes on top here. And make sure that this stays within that AC pipe right there. Then you'll just need to twist it as you're pulling it out and it should be good. There's a minimum pressure that will go on that AC hose. It's not so bad, it's not bending it, okay? It's not gonna move more than two millimeter. Just gonna be stiff a bit. And from there, you'll be able to pull it out. So I guess this is it for the, uh, for the video itself. Uh, for now, because that one is going for a rebuild. Uh, usually the price are about between, <clears throat> I'll say $270 to 350 The core can bring you back, I guess, 20 to $50, depends where. Uh, right now on Rakoto, uh, you can get a brand new one, not refurbished, just a brand new one for $200. Uh, and there is no exchange for a core. Uh, it's an AC Delco alternator. That's actually a really good price. But for me, I'll take that one for a refurbish. Uh, there's a shop nearby. It's going to cost me about 150 or 160 So it's not that bad. And you support your local community. So I will always say try to get it rebuilt because they're going to test it before selling it to you. Compared to buying a refurbish, uh, you can pay $300 for a refurbish and you get it and can be actually not working some of them does and it did happen to me that uh, the nut in the back for uh, the connector was uh, stripped so not working properly so yeah it's up to you you can like i sell i'm telling you i'll put in the description the link for rakoto uh, if you want to see the different uh, alternators available for now so that was my video to remove the alternator and basically for replacement, same pattern as I just did to re reinstall it. I mean, just put it the way it is right now, slide it down, make this slide in that corner and should get in shape, uh, into position and just twist it until it reaches proper location. So hope you guys enjoyed that and hope to see you again. All right.